Welcome to another presentation from the CV Academics Foundation, home of the AMP Honors Program. Welcome to AMP Honors Program. It's my privilege to get to introduce Dr. Amanda Nelson as one of our expert panel members. Dr. Nelson is an Associate Dean and Professor for the UW Green, for UW Green Bay. She's also an adjunct professor at the Medical College of Wisconsin. And aside from all that, she's also a certified athletic trainer. So to get started, just tell us a little bit about what you do specifically and what you're interested in. Sure. Um, my role at UW Green Bay um, is kind of multifaceted. So I'm in administration and then I'm also a faculty member in human bio. And then as you mentioned, I also teach as an adjunct instructor at MCW Green Bay. Um, by trade. So when I think about my schooling, um, you're correct in saying I am an athletic trainer. That's what I did my undergrad degree in and decided after that it wasn't something I wanted to do um, to the disappointment of my parents at that point. <laughs> and, and so I decided, well, actually, I, I would say I, I didn't really decide, but I would say I had some faculty members that persuaded me that grad school was was in my best interest. And so I decided then to go to the University of Illinois in Champaign and um, go after a master's degree in exercise physiology. And after I completed that degree, I still didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I continued with a PhD and um, received a PhD in exercise phys and neurobiology. And I had the opportunity to teach while I was there um, getting my PhD. And that's what I kind of fell in love with. So as my trade, I'm an exercise physiologist, neurobiologist. Um, I would say since I've been at UW Green Bay though, um, my practice is really anatomy. So I've really gotten involved in dissection. Um, I teach the cadaver dissection course for the medical school. Um, so I have kind of a um, mini interest, I guess, but exercise physiology and anatomy would probably be the two at the top. Okay, that's, that's awesome. The hardest courses are your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, how did you become interested in those things? Like what got you to go to undergrad for athletic training? And then what you said the faculty persuaded you, what really brought up that interest? Was it since you were little? Did something change in high school or can you go on and about sure. that? Sure, um, I actually went to undergrad to study computer graphics and design. What? And <laughs> while I was um, pursuing that, and I, it's still an interest of mine. I still have an interest in art. Um, but as I was doing that, I was playing sports in, in undergrad and I kind of got drawn towards the athletic field and I saw these athletic trainers and what they were doing. And so I had a, a true interest in sports medicine. Um, and so at first I thought it was going to be PT. And so I did an extensive internship in physical therapy. And in fact, it was an entire semester, eight hours a day um, internship um, in physical therapy. And while I was doing that internship, um, I realized that's not what I wanted to do. And I think partly because it was the clinic I was in. The clinic served um, a lot of individuals, elderly individuals, and it served a lot of workmen's comp individuals. And so the pa patient population that was coming to us didn't want to get better. It was a social environment for them. So they literally did not want to get the green light to say, you don't need to come to PT because that was devastating to them because it was social, right? <laughs> and so I was watching all these individuals never get better. And I was like, PT is not for me. So I think PT wasn't for me because of the environment I was in. Um, and so then I decided athletic training um, because it seemed like those that got injured in the athletic environment wanted to get better. Mm -hmm. um, and so I could see um, a lot of the, the student athletes at the time actually pursue PT as this, this mechanism to return to the field or return to, to return to play. Um, but then the further I got along in my degree, I realized the lifestyle of an athletic trainer wasn't something that I, I necessarily wanted. I wanted to be able to be home at night. Um, I wanted to, you know, not be working at 5 a.m. all the way till 11 o'clock at night. And so at that point, I really started to question, you know, if, but I was so far into my degree that it was like, I almost needed to complete it because I was like a semester away from it at that point. Um, so I completed my degree in athletic training. And then I was like, I guess I'll just find a job as an athletic trainer. Um, not thinking that I was qualified to go on to, to further schooling. And one of my instructors actually pulled me in and said, you're capable. Um, this is what grad school is. I didn't even know what grad school was because I was, a, I was a first generation college student and my parents didn't know what grad school was. And so we had a lot of conversations about what that was and I ended up applying to some grad schools and, and that's kind of what led me down, down that route then at that point. 
Yeah, that's awesome. I it's funny because I was talking to Dr. Merkel. He's also a first generation. I myself am a first generation. I didn't think I could even get into college. I didn't plan on going to college. My high school GPA is in the two point somethings. And I jokingly, when I took EMT, I asked my teacher how you become a doctor as a complete joke. And now the summer I'll be starting, so it's crazy. I don't I don't know what happened, but it's it's crazy to see other people who are also first generation. Because it kind of gets lost. Dr. Merkel was talking about one of the graduations he was at for MCW, almost everybody's parent. If, if your parent's a doctor, they can hood you when you graduate mm -hmm. or something along those lines. And he said yeah. nearly everybody's parents were doctors. <laughs> and that's crazy. Yeah. Um, but it, I mean, it really does disadvantage someone who doesn't know what the resources are, mm -hmm. right? And you Or you don't have the connections that someone else has. And oh. it disadvantages you because you don't even know what questions to ask, right? <laughs> And so I wouldn't, even, I would have never asked about grad school because I didn't know what it was. Right. Right? And so it almost like, it was like, I needed to be put, when I said I was persuaded, I, I literally was kind of pushed yeah. and told like, you're capable of doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So can you describe like a day in the life of maybe what you do at UW Green Bay and then also maybe what you do for MCW? Sure. <laughs> A day in the life is tough because every day is different. Yeah. Um, as I said, I kind of take on these multiple roles. So some of my my work involves a lot of meetings, administrative meetings, um, but I do have a lot of class time as well. Although right now during COVID, it's a little bit different. But in a in a typical year, you know, I would teach two or three classes in person. Um, I would be spending at least three hours a day in prep time for each of those courses. Um, to get ready for them. Um, typically, one of those courses would be a hands-on course, so a dissection course that I would get to, to work with students um, right next to me and, and do hands-on kind of high-impact practices. And when I'm teaching at MCW, that kind of puts a kink actually in my schedule because the MCW campus is not on our campus. And so I oftentimes will do all that administrative stuff, teaching in person, up until about one o'clock. And then I take off and drive over to the St. Norbert campus and prep for the course over there. And then I have a three hour lab and then we tear down that lab at the end of the day. And by then it's probably like 6 p.m. Um, but at that point, then I know that emails have rolled in. Um, I can expect anywhere from, you know, 30 to 70 emails during that period of time that I was away from my desk. And so I spend a lot of the evening just responding to emails or catching up with students um, virtually or whatever it might be. So that's a, I don't know if that's a typical day. I mean, every day is kind of different depending on um, where I'm at in a semester. Um, but those would be common things, I guess I would be participating in um, during a typical day. Okay. Um, and then going further off of that, what would you say some of your favorite things are about what you do? And it can be anywhere, anything in regards to your position. And then what are your least favorite things? Those are great questions anytime you're trying to interview anyone about their job, because usually when someone's been in their job for a while, they're not hesitant about telling you what the good and the bad are of, yeah. of that job, right? Yeah. Um, the good hands down is interacting directly with students, the, the personal connections I get to have with students. And so I really appreciate um, just the interactions I have in the classroom. I really like teaching labs because you get to do the one-on-one -on -one, um, interactions. At the medical school, I mean, there's you know five people around a cadaver tank and you come up to that tank and you get to engage in education and just getting to know those students very intimately during that period of time. And so that's what I value the most <clears throat> about um, what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I can have the worst day and then I can have an interaction with the student and I'm like, the rest of the day doesn't matter, right? Like this, this, is, this is what I, this is why I chose this profession to get into this. Um, the bad parts of the day, grading can be can be a, a, a bit of a challenge sometimes. It's just a lot and um, it's not always really fun to be able to do that. Um, so, so that would be one of them. And I would say, honestly, about our job, you never walk away from it. So when you're in higher ed, there's not a 6 p.m. I clock out you're never away from it. And so you are responding to emails sometimes at 10 or 11 o'clock at night, sometimes at five o'clock in the morning. Um, so you're, you're engaging in that all the time. And I think partly that's because students are changing a little bit, but there is an expectation that uh, they get a response back in a, in a timely manner. And as I was just saying that, it made me kind of think it's funny 
because one of the reasons I got away from athletic training was because of that time demand. And yet I'm in a profession that's just as demanding of yeah. my time. And, and um, so that's interesting that I, that was one of the things I didn't like about, about, I don't, maybe it's because I didn't know that that's yeah. what I was going to be doing. I don't know, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you wouldn't really, I mean, I guess you don't think about during grad school that you're going to be up at 11 PM responding to a question that you've answered 17 times, but. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And you, you don't want to not respond either, right? Because you want to continue to engage in that conversation. You want students to reach out to you. But at some point, it's like you have to shut it off because finding that work-life balance is really difficult. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the AMP Honors Program students or maybe any words of advice, things you wish you knew or anything else? Yeah, I, I probably would say one, and I share this with my undergrad students all the time. Um, I really think exposure is, is key to your success. So um, what I mean by that is, even if you know pre-meds for you or medical school is for you, I think it's really important that you expose yourself to other specialties. Um, understand what a nurse does understand what their day-to-day -day is, what they like about their job, what they don't like, understand an exercise physiologist or an athletic trainer or whoever it might be. One, you might have an interest and you might go down that path, right? You might decide that that's the better profession for you. But I also think once you get out and you start to work in the professional world, for you not to understand what your colleagues are doing and understand is that exactly what their specialty is and how they contribute to your specialty, I think I think that's a disadvantage to you. And so I just really think that it, exposure is key. Any internship you can get, take that internship. Shadowing experience, take that shadowing experience. I, I struggle with the student who comes in, they're a senior in high school and they come in with their parents for advising and they say, I wanna be a pediatric oncologist. And I'm like, whoa, pump the brakes. <laughs> why like what made you come to that conclusion right and they they might have just read a story somewhere they you know like it, but i'm like you really need to to expose yourself to all these other occupations and specialties before you can really make a decision like that because this is a commitment right like that's a commitment for your entire life and so i just really think it, exposure is key um you're going to serve the profession better by exposing yourself to those other specialties and those other occupations and so that would be my two cents yeah, and that, that, it, that hits home kind of because as a paramedic, there's a lot of people, one, they don't know that they're between EMT and paramedic, which is understandable, but some people think, oh, you don't just pick people up and put them in the ambulance and drive to the hospital. They don't realize paramedics have a very fast scope of practice. We do a lot of things, but it's, but you, I didn't know you could intubate. I didn't know you could give this medicine. Like, yeah, no, they do all of that. So it would be nice that a lot of people just, that exposure aspect that you're talking about is huge. And I think mm -hmm. it'd be very helpful. Um, I've had the conversation with students too. Like if you've ever had an opportunity to watch like an open heart surgery, mm -hmm. go in and watch that surgery and then take note of everyone that's in the room. Because you oftentimes think when in a surgery, you know, there's the surgeon and there's some nurses, but there's a lot of other people in that room. Like what is the anesthesiologist doing? What's the perfusionist doing? Like, you know, like, I think it's important that you understand all of the different specialties, um, because one, that might be something you're interested in, mm -hmm. or two, I just think it's super important that you understand how your colleagues are inter interact in a, in a situation like that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, it's been awesome talking to you. I appreciate you taking the time today. Um, if anyone has any questions, are they free to reach out to you via your UW-Green Bay email? You bet. At any time, if anyone has any questions, I would be happy to, to respond. Awesome. Thanks, Dr. Nelson, and thanks everyone for watching. You guys have a great day. This has been a presentation of the CV Academics Foundation, home of the AMP Honors Program.